This is LPGOB. Listen up, children. You are listening to Fem House Radio. I said, listen up, children. On Diplo's Revolution, Sirius XM. A wonderful night. It's made as much by the dancers as the music. <laughs> Guided as much by the spirit of joy in the room as by the hand which reaches for the next record. Each of us has a role in tonight's experience. We all play in the band. This is LPGOB and I founded FemHouse, a 501c3 foundation and educational platform that teaches the technical areas of music making for women, non-binary, trans, and other marginalized gender identities. Every week I will be interviewing and spotlighting women in music while bringing you the best dance tunes from around the world. world, 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 world. <sighs> Ultra motherfucking Nate, where in the hey, world bro. are you? <laughs> it's so good to see you. <laughs> you are a jet setting queen, so where in the world are you right now? I see some I'm gold home. plaques, so it seems I'm like home. you might be home. Yeah, I'm home, thankfully. Gold records I'm, behind you. I'm getting a little bit of... Actually, it's an illusion that when I'm home, I'm getting some rest. Because when I'm home, it just means I'm working on things that I can't get done when I'm on the road because I'm too exhausted and have too many too many moving parts on the road. So, yeah, I'm That's still working, so but home. That's so true. I, I find that you'd be like, oh, good, you're home. You can relax. And, and actually, it's it's... It is nice to sleep in your bed and get more consistency in sleep. It is nice to sleep, sleep in your bed every night. But yes. it's a different kind of um, output. Yeah, you have to. Do, so for you, what are those things that you that you find difficult to do on the road and is easier to do well, home? Well, you know, I mean, the first and foremost, you know, I'm a mom and I have a senior in high school, which is which I'm really proud about, and I really take you know take time to be in the present and um, and be there for him and show up for him as much as possible. So you know, I'm a I'm a Avid soccer mom, literally and figuratively. No. <laughs> oh yes, I'm very that. I'm very that. Yeah, I took okay, team so snacks is... yesterday. And... No way. Yeah, 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 man. Yeah. So the how whole, whole do thing. you? Uh, this is to me. Uh, you know, this is a very personal question to me. I struggle with. I really want to be a mom one day, and how to balance our our specific weird career with doing mm-hmm. that. So how do you? Do you just structure like these are the these are the weekends I'm going to be on the road and then or you know weeks I'm going to be on the road? How do you balance? How do you balance that? I'm not asking for a friend. <laughs> yeah, it's it's crazy, but you know I had a I had a really great village um, to work with me with that. I mean I'm divorced now ten years, but um, my ex husband and I were you were still like really really tight. Our families are really really tight. Um, nothing Beautiful. has changed with our dynamics and relationship and we all went into into it knowing eyes wide open how crazy my life and my schedule was i mean i met him you know basically like in the midst of of free being like ridiculous around the world and and, but before that you know obviously i was already established in the music business i had already released albums and everyone here in baltimore you know kind of knew who i was and what i did um he didn't know who i was and when I walked in the door when we met, but once the, everyone, he's like, everybody knows this woman. Why don't I know her? Because he, yeah. he, he thought he was the jam and everybody knew him. <laughs> so Little did he you know. know. <laughs> yeah. So that, you know, we, we, when we started dating, like he was very eyes wide open, like what my life entailed. And we spent a lot of time together before we brought a child into our equation. And we, we both really... Um, had great family structures that were ready to be involved in having a baby because we knew it was going to be like a challenge with me having to to go back on the road at some point. I planned for two years actually before I actually had my son, like what my life is going to be like. I know I'm very type A. It's it's a whole thing. You were able to plan out. (laughs) This is so. I mean, I guess you were also at like a huge moment in your career, so maybe I was like the big. I feel it's almost like the bigger you are, the further you can plan out in a way. So so you were able to like I want to finish an album by this time in order to like you were able to plan all of that out. Yeah, and it was a really crazy moment because my son was born in '05. So he came really after like the whole downfall of the music industry with the, with wow. the, you know, <laughs> when Napster and file sharing wow. and the, the whole business model went out the door with how, you know, physical product was like a thing and, and, and labels were spiraling. And it was pretty much after my situation critical album, I was in my Stranger Than Fiction album mode and I was changed to like Universal and I had no relationship with Universal or, or any wow. of the people there and we were putting out an album. It was like it was a whole thing. And after that, 
you know, I left the label after that was that album came out and then I, I went independent. So I had been in this place of being independent and also getting married wow. somewhere in that time oh span, God. like 2002 and 2003, and then having a child in 2005 when I was now like a completely self-releasing, independent, you know, artist, my own label, uh, my manager and I, you know, handling all of, all of our, all of our stuff ourselves. You know, we had always, always handled it ourselves anyway, but now I was writing the checks. You know. I mean, no, so. I mean, also like to be, to try, like, I find it hard enough to navigate the music industry and I came into it at a time when like, this is, you know, things have been established as to how you do things and Spotify has already been like, you know, yep. the big factor. And to have to transition and relearn the game mm -hmm. after, you know, figuring it out, which is hard enough, and then to figure mm -hmm. it out again is mind blowing to me. I, yeah. I'm so impressed with that. You should be so proud of that. And then also to develop a family in that time. I, can't. I know, I know, I know. It was, <laughs> I took on a lot, a lot. But a lot of things were unforeseen. I mean, you know, who knew that the right. business was going to be absolutely right. crazy. And at that time, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was ready to start a family. I was ready to um, have a significant relationship. I was ready to, to plant seeds yeah. in other areas of my life. I had, Ugh. you know, already been in the music business for a decade or more yeah. at that time. So, you know, it was very important to continue to build my life yeah, broadly. Yes. And also it seems like you knew who you were, you knew what you wanted, and, and to maybe take control of, you know, being more of an independent artist and writing those checks and figuring out, it, it seems like maybe the timing was, I mean, it sounds hard and challenging, but also maybe like you were in a, such an intensive growth period that that kind of could have been a cool thing to a uh, catalyst to push you forward. Yeah, I definitely did. I mean, we, we already had the practice. Like I said, my manager and I, yeah. and um, and then it, it became, um, his business kind of expanded, so it became two managers. So my two managers and I, we always functioned that way. And so we didn't stop yeah. functioning in the way that we had always been functioning. We just were now, you know, looking at like the expense of things in a way that we weren't, I mean, we always yeah. did anyway, because we always yeah. cared about not overspending because it was yeah. still coming out of still my your pocket money. anyway. That's, yeah. Yeah. But now it's more direct, you know, on the front end coming out. So it's like all of that. And then having a, having a child and then, you know, having the support system around that with my husband, my ex-husband's family and my family, and they all jumped in to really be there for <laughs> us during that process. And so that gave me a lot of peace of mind when it was time to go back on the road, but I had pretty yeah. much carved out the time period of planning to get pregnant, being pregnant, and then being home to be with my newborn for a certain period of time. Um, you know, saving my money and putting things away and, and doing like all my videos and all my recording and all of like all of the album art, everything for my Grime, Silk and Thunder album, which was number five. Um, putting all of that in place before the, the pregnancy Wow. Time. <laughs> okay, so doing that in real time is hard enough. I'm working on my first album right now. And doing that in real time, <laughs> let me tell you, it's hard enough. It's so bananas. to have the foresight to be like, I'm going to finish all of this before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's And insane. then when it was time, when all of those elements were in place, it was like, okay, now I need to get pregnant. Now is our pregnancy time, babe. Yeah, this is it. <laughs> <laughs> so it was like. You know, I'm, it's just very like, I'm, you know, as you know, I was going into medicine from our conversations, right? So I still have that research and development mentality in a lot yeah. of things. So I'm still like, and this is how we plan and this is how we work this out. So obviously, wow. like I worked out like when I'm ovulating and when's the best time. Like, and I real I learned like women only have like really two days out of the month that they can really get pregnant, right? Which is crazy. <laughs> then you have to wait a whole other month. It's really insane when you actually are trying to want to get pregnant. Yes. So yeah. first we were kind of like willy nilly about it, but then I was like, um, look, yeah. I've only got two <laughs> days in the month actually, and we're in a we're in a time frame here. So like we really need to drill I down just on this. I just finished all the stuff, so we we have a it's it's so planned yeah, out so for like, two it years. Was like okay, now I know yeah. the two yeah. when the, those two days are when that window is wow. when that good week is, and then I was just like, look, I don't care. This is not about romance right now. We have a job to do. We are in a production mode. This is I about need producing. Your, I need your best three minutes right now. Like I know we're not in the mood, but <laughs> Ultra, this just is handle it. Everything. Let's just, let's just yeah. go back to the movie we were watching. <laughs> 
Let's do the business. And we still fall out laughing about that because we were so casual about it. Like, listen, we got we we got to make our baby. Okay, so I, like, let's just. This is this amazing, <laughs> and you're still and you're still friends after oh divorce. Oh my god, after- He's, we, we're the we're the best. Like, you know, how beautiful is that? Every day we talk. Every day we. We still co-parent. We do what you know. We handle our child's life together. And when we found you know other partners along the way, you know boyfriends, girlfriends, whatever, you know those people coming into our life are always made aware. Listen, this, this is, is the, the structure unit. of yeah. our life. This is the deni- the dynamic, and it will not change because our son have to accept it. is job one. And you're either good with that and get in the party, and we're all good. And we're one big happy family. There's no jealousy and weird, you know, energies. Yeah. Or this is not for you, and I still love you. And yeah. Wow. And yeah. that just and, to and put it's that never out there been and a find problem the right along the way. Wow, well, is, yeah, there's been especially problems if you preface everybody with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good, Some people goodbye. have problems Good and they've had to go. Yeah. Yeah, they had to go. <laughs> so how did you? Uh, this is again a selfish question I'm asking you, but how did you like? Was it so hard to leave to go do those first gigs after having oh, a kid? Like, girl. that's the part that I'm, I'm so emotionally scared Terri- about I'm that. still terrible. I'm, listen, my son would tell you a whole, like, other side of my life. <laughs> I'm still terrible when I'm on the road with him. I'm still managing his <laughs> life. Like, very tiger mom on the case. I know his schedule. I know his friends. Where are you? On what are we case. doing? What's the plan? Wake up. Like, you're, you've got to get to soccer. You've got to get... He- Listen, I could be just coming off stage and my son no. is texting me like, Mom, I mean, I'm like, okay, but I'm getting ready to go perform at Wembley. Can we talk about this like <laughs> in 20 minutes? Literally. Yeah. It's very that. This is so beautiful to hear you talk about it because it, it almost normalizes. Like, to me, it seems like, okay, if you're focused on Wembley, like, it's, there's just, that must be so much stress that everything else has to go. And to hear that, like, you can still be in communication, you can still be a mom, and you can still go do this. Like, just how to balance that seems so overwhelming to me, and to hear yeah. you talk about it's, it is it's really inspiring. It's a lot, and it's not, everyone's not built for it. I mean, yeah. you really have to be, have to be flexible. You have to be highly malleable in your, in your personality and in, in your energy. You need to be able to flip back and forth and wear several hats at once. And that's not easy for everyone. There is a lot of fixed personalities out there that are like, I'm in this lane and I'm concentrating here. I can't get distracted or I I can't get back where I was. I've always had kind of the ability to juggle a lot of things at once and somehow be tuned in to all of them at the same time. It gets a little tricky sometimes. And it's not really the best way that you want to you want to be for a sustained amount of time. But when I need to be like, I still need to be there for my son and I still need to be there for my career and show up for that, whatever that demand is in that moment. Fortunately, I've been doing it for so long. A lot of things are very commonplace and are like, you know, autopilot for me. Um, And then everyone else around me has grown up with this being their reality. So they understand like, mom has to go on stage in a minute and we know what that looks like so we know what she needs and we know where we need to get out of her damn way or she's gonna wait out (laughs) on us you know (laughs) that is so beautiful i love that and and did you feel like did it ever this is like a another weird it's it's silly and unnecessary to worry about this but it's like a you know you work so hard in your career right and then Mm -hmm. does it having a kid put into perspective, like maybe your career matters less than we thought it mattered. Like, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Did that happen to you? Or did you still have full force? Actually, it mattered more. It really changed. It really changed the, um, I don't know how to put it really crystallized what I was doing more for me because I kind of was on autopilot just like, in the moment and and just you know feeling my feeling like this is the this is the vibe in, the, in this moment whereas when when my son came into the picture then everything took on a lot more weight because now the repercussion is this is his legacy that i'm forming i didn't think Whoa. of the totality of the things that i was doing in a real way until my son came along and i realized this is his legacy Everything that I've created, everything that I've put out, every oh, every wow. article that's ever been written, every picture that's ever been taken, every song that I've ever written, this is his legacy. 
And so it gave everything wow. a lot more perspective and, and um, it kind of fortified for me what I was doing because this is something that this person is going to carry with them forever. Like I've forever shaped this person's wow. life beyond that being their even mother. More. Yeah, beyond Whoa. being their mother outside of that, you know, especially when he got to an age where him and, and his friends could be on social network and be yep. on social media and, and now like are tuned yep. into what I'm doing and they're on my Instagram and, you know, they, they're listening to music that I create and things like that. Wow. Um, you know, everything imagine. is is done with that thought of like, this is this is my son's legacy. This is it's this more is than you. Me. Yeah. Which actually sounds like such a gift to like, there's so much of the artist's life is like so much you, you, you. And I, I don't mm -hmm. know how healthy that is. And so actually, yeah. Yeah. wow, that is beautiful to be like, no, this is greater than me. And that actually gives it more purpose. And the fact wow. that I was able to share such amazing experiences with, with this person, you know, with someone mm -hmm. that, that I, something, someone that I created, that I had this great part, this great role in creating this amazing individual and I could take him around the world as a baby wow. and he can grow up meeting people and seeing beautiful places and you know just just him being on the beach with me at you know eight years old in in Italy and at 4 a.m while I'm DJing oh and experience God. that you know what I mean like in this <laughs> to be beautiful a person location of the world. yes yeah, you know he's he's the education he's experienced priceless. some wonderful things we lived in Ibiza for two summers while I was in residency at Space um, for a party oh called Cafe Ole. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, years before the, the, the <laughs> pandemic lockdown happened and everything kind of shifted. But, like, you know, just being able to, to have your child there and, and, and interact wow. with other people of the, around the world. You know, he got to go throughout Europe. He's, he's met all wow. kinds of people. And that's given him an education that, you know, you can't get from books, that you can't get sitting totally. in one place you know that that's a oh, whole this other makes me level feel so because i'm like ah, oh, would i be selfish to continue and to, it's so uh beautiful to hear your perspective on that no it, it's it not selfish at sense. all it's not selfish at all and it is it has enabled me to to give him an experience and that's you know that's really what we want everyone to have you know i think yeah. so many of the issues that we deal with worldwide would not be the case if people got out of their little microcosms and they really experienced <laughs> the world and experienced other people and interacted yeah. with each other in that way. So he's already way ahead of the game. He's very social. He re he's very comfortable in any kind of environment with any person, mm -hmm. whether he's with a three year old or an 80 year old from anywhere How in the world. Is that? He's very yep. comfortable. Oh, what and, a gift. and that's, you know, that's really an yeah. amazing quality. Your lifestyle created that. Ah, thank you for sharing that with me. I feel I've worked through, I'm working through a lot of worries about this. So thank No, <laughs> I hear you. It's candidly. a lot to and take on. this should be normalized. So thank you. We, mm -hmm. women in this industry can do we're what they want. It. And we're doing yeah, it. we're doing it. Look at my nerd um, okay. girls. Like both of them have yes! kids. And it's like, schlep them around the world with them. And, I mean, that's so, and, like, and they, and they also are, talk about it. And it's on social media. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. seeing that. I'm like, visual representation of this is so important. Thank you. Yep. Yes. Yep. Um, okay, I'm going to read your little blurb. Ask you a okay. few questions. Okay. You are with LPGOB on Femhouse Radio. And our next guest is one of the most legendary divas of the dance floor, a grand dame of club land and pop music adored by fans around the world whose voice is part of the soundtrack of our lives, and one of my personal heroes, Ultranate. She has Yay. a career that spans 30 years and has released 10 <laughs> studio albums. Her ability to find and strike that chord of joy within us runs through every single song she has released and is why she remains so relevant today as a songwriter, singer, producer, and DJ. Welcome to Fem House Radio Ultra. Yay, I'm so to excited you. to be here. Thank ah. you, my love. <laughs> so I discovered your track free a few years ago. Sorry it took me so long, but I was raised by deadheads in Oregon, so it just <laughs> took me right. a little bit. I, I was at a disadvantage. Better and late I than made, never. Hello. <laughs> changed my life, so I made an edit of it, and I was using it to close out all of my bigger sets, and it was connecting with generation after generation. And I'd love to hear in your words why you think that song has connected and continues to connect with, pe with so many different types of people. Man, you know, free is really the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> um, and I, I believe at the very base of it, it's, because, it's the messaging. The messaging mm -hmm. um, just really cuts through and uh, really hits, strikes a chord 
with most people because it speaks to, you know, our, our basic nature. Um, mm-hmm. it, it's political, like you said, it, you know, in the uh, interview for the Amazon UK release. Um, it's political, it's emotional, it's joy, it's all of those things. And I think especially in dance music, at the time that it came out, the music had started to get really redundant and started to get, um, you know, lo- kind of lose that emotional uh, piece yep. and, and just go very, you know, the Lowest more common technology, denominator. yeah, the more yeah. technology enabled us to make records easier and make, and, and for everyone to make records easier, whether that's good or bad, that's a whole nother conversation. <laughs> but um, I think things kind of got watered down a lot. I think uh, diluted, you know, people started thinking that um, less is more by just doing top line and, you know, it's just yep. this one line over and over and over again. And I think people became af- afraid of songs in a way in the dance music industry. Um, they, they, they were afraid that the attention span wasn't there, that people wouldn't get it or, you know, let's just, just, let's just make, you know, just, just as my grandmother used to say, take out the, uh, take out the meat, you know, and, uh, <laughs> totally. do it too much work. Let's yep, just make yep. it easily digestible and, yep. and then on to the next track. And I think that did us, did the, the community a very, a big disservice. So I think when free came along, it was this very authentic record. It was written without any um, care or attention for what's working out there right now. What are the charts doing? What's the, what's, you know, the, the, the genre doing at this moment? And let's stay within those parameters or let's make a record like this last record that was successful yep. in, in dance music or house yep. music or whatever. Like we didn't, my move to swing and I and my, and uh, my manager, Bill Coleman, when we approached going into the studio to make what would be my first single after two albums with Warner Brothers, six years running around um, on a major label, and then shifting to uh, an independent label like Strictly Rhythm, um, and given basically, you know, an open checkbook and free range to, for lack of a better term, do what you want to do. Um, <laughs> you know. I see what you did there? <laughs> I mean, that's so, we that's just, so that's you, you it. made we it, you made it in a free, like, you are free when you made it. That's so, you yeah. feel that. We really were, and you know, there were there were no. Uh, I mean, really, no one at Strictly and Gladys was was uh, instrumental in, in signing me. She was very very committed to signing me, and it took a while, probably about a year, before we actually before I actually did the deal on my side, just you know, mm-hmm. organizing things. But I was I was already writing again for what I intended to be my next album, mm-hmm. because you know, as you've learned in my personality, I'm very type A. I'm very already, <laughs> oh, I'm always over there, like ten what years are we doing ahead. Next? Like, what's the next thing we're doing? Let's start working on getting that in place. Like that's the goal. Okay. Now let's work backwards. How are we getting there? So yeah. I had already started building those blocks, and then the yeah. deal was done, and then it was like, okay, let's go in the studio and 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 write the first record, and um, we we really wanted it to be. A, 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 something jarring, like really to go out there and go balls to the wall with, you know, you nailed it. take the risk, <laughs> like step out there and like win, lose a draw. Let's just write the record that we want to write and, and, you know, and let the chips the in- fall. You'll have the intrinsic win of, you know, that you did that, you know, you went balls to the wall and, and then look what, ca- let this be a lesson to everybody who's making music right now. You know, don't, yeah. don't look at what's happening in the charts. Don't like what, what is authentically it's coming gotten, from you? I mean, it's gotten harder, though, because the labels, the labels make it so difficult. Um, you know, when you're, when you're being A&R'd, you're at the whim of someone else's opinion. And for me, opinions are, you know, what that saying is. Like, <laughs> I don't know what you're basing your opinion on, what your experiences are, right. what your tastes are. Are you, you know, a repressed artist yourself? And you're projecting that onto me, you know what yeah. I mean? So oh, yeah. when you're being A&R'd at, with labels, like who's listening to the music and making the decisions of what comes out, you're kind of at the mercy of a lot of people's opinion. Yeah. Fortunately, we didn't have that either because I came from a major label situation. I had already made two albums. I was already a proven artist and I was already a built name. So mm-hmm. no one needed to A&R me in that way. What a gift. So I had a, a, a leg up in a way that most creators yeah creatives don't have going into a new record deal sometimes, unfortunately. So um, we just made the record we wanted to make, and we were very inspired by, 
you know, uh, Bill was listening to a lot of Sheryl Crow. Um, my first he concert was always ever. Sending me, yes. He was always sending me Sheryl Crow records. Cause like, <laughs> no! my manager Bill is so like the, the man behind the green curtain, you know, he's always like, listen to this, check out that, you know, he's very in the know of like who the new <laughs> music is, the who the new artists are coming out. I can't keep up with it, but that's amazing. You know, Shout out Bill. That's he comes fantastic. from that, from that billboard, you know, world, yeah. that billboard column writer. Uh, for yep. the dance column. That's the world that he came from before wow. he started his management company. So that's still kind of like his thing. He's very pitbull focused about music and, and different oh, things. So beautiful. I was listening to, you know, I still, a lot of classic rock. And then, like I said, I was in Europe a lot and in UK. So a lot of show crow, a lot of guitars. So we knew going in, let's wow. do some guitar. Like, let's just like so hit cool. some rock energy yeah. and you know, and then it's funk so it up cool. with like classic mood to swing, New York, clubby <sighs> drums under it. And then of I'm course you add the sweet backgrounds, <laughs> gospel from the yes. A-team girls. These people, you know, have sung for Luther Vandross and all of the wow. big A-list, you know, pop and R&B acts and their voices are pure and resonant. And you add all of that in a mix. Like we yeah. were just making a witch's brew up in there, you know, uh. and just... You, you know, can just, feel that it's so special the the dance music and the and the guitars and that I mean personally I love that combination and it's it's so cool to see you do that have so much foresight into that. So for those that don't know, Ultra and I just spent a few days together in Air Studios in London recording her track Free with an orchestra and choir with Jules Buckley and Pete Tong. And that version of Free just came out on Amazon Music, which we are very pumped about. What was yes. your experience like for you re-recording that track in that environment with that many different musicians, you know, with, with that different of a track? Well, when I first, the first day I arrived, just walking into Air Studios, which is a legendary studio in and of itself, uh, you know, was the gag. The first gag. <laughs> it was the first gag. So I had, See, you know, I had seeing to... you walk into the studio almost made me pass out. So yes, I can't imagine. <laughs> I was like, this is all really happening. Because, you know, it had been talked about for quite a while. You know, there's a lot of conversations going on. I did not believe you, until I was there. You know, when you have dealt with labels for so many years, like, you know it ain't happening until it's happening. That's always our saying. So, you know, you, you contain, you're, you're, you're cautiously optimistic as you move the ball forward. But you contain yourself. But then once it all starts to materialize and it's really going down and the ink is dry on the contract and, and like people have started spending money to yeah. bring it to fruition, <laughs> then you kind of go in a little bit. So that was my first feeling walking into the studio. And then sitting there that first day, which is the, the first day, you know, recording all of the musicians and everything, I, I just most of the time was in awe that all these people are here all these amazing talents bringing together their track you wrote. Oh, so energy, cool. their, their magic, their musicianship yeah. in such a way yeah. to this work that I wrote 25 how, years ago. 25 this years ago. This is the 25th so, anniversary so, this year. Yeah. And that's which so, is why so we've done like relevant. all these different things. Yeah. 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 So beautiful. Um, so you were playing the Femme House stage at Huluween Music Festival oh, in, sorry. um, no worries at Huey Music Festival in uh, Florida at the end of the month, and we couldn't yep. be more honored to have you. How did you get into DJing, and what can we expect from your DJ set? Well, you know, the DJ situation was kind of a natural migration, um, really much like my career itself in music. It was born out of necessity in a moment of mm. just inspiration to create something and with no expectations. So um, it was... We're actually turning 19 this year. So 19 years ago, <laughs> wow. Um, myself and my now late uh, uh, best girlfriend, um, like sister, Lisa Moody, um, she, was, we, she used to always do road management and things for me. And um, when we were home one weekend, we wanted to go out and hear some music and there was nowhere to go. All of the music venues and parties have really shrunk down to like nothing. And I think the last straw happened when one of my good friends is named Donnie Berlin. He's a really, really great DJ here in Baltimore, moved to New York years ago. But Donnie's party was kind of like the last bastion of hope for our scene to have any yeah. foothold anywhere, any cool space, any cool vibes. And that party was cut. And then it was like a rebellion happened in the city and everybody wow. was online and was talking about it and it was like a conspiracy going on and yeah. it was just a mess. So 
in that moment, we wanted to go hear music. There was nowhere to go. I asked Lisa, I was like, you know what? Let's just go play some music. You know, our, my, my girlfriend at the time um, had, she was the only one that had turntables, right? So she had a set of techniques, 1200s. And we were like, well, yes. Rhonda's got techniques. So let's just, <laughs> you gather your vinyl and I'll gather my vinyl here. And let's just go over Rhonda's house and, and play her vinyl. Now we had never actually played vinyl ourselves. But we, you know, we were part of club culture, so, you yeah, know, you can we figure just it out. play it, and I'm like, you know, we'll just, uh, you know, make the best of it. I don't know how to, we don't know how to blend, but we know how to play good music. And that's what we did. We that's invited a few friends. Wow. Yeah, that's half the battle. So we had a few <laughs> friends, we invited them over, and we're just going to have a jam session, and, you know, come and hang out. And that's what we did. So we invited the friends over. They paid us dust because they were like, oh, God, what are they doing over there? <laughs> they started watching a movie or something. Like, they completely tuned us out. And we were just train wrecking. It was shoes in the dryer everywhere, right? Because we were not just happy to, like, let the record run out and then put the next one on. We were like, girl, we got to get this. Has to, listen, this is like peak hour. We got to get this right. We got to get these transitions happening. So we didn't have the technical skill because we, you know, yeah. we didn't know how to technically yeah. do it. But yes. the bug, the bug bit us in that moment. And then we were just like maniacs, right? I get it. Yes. So everybody that had, everybody that had turntables that we knew in the city, including the record stores and we were friends with, you know, the people that own them. We were like, we got to get in and practice. So we were just getting in and playing all the time. And, and then, like, about six months after that, I started my party because I was like, there's no better way to learn your craft than doing it in front of people and under duress. <laughs> you know what I mean? That is exactly you how I learned. You can play in your bedroom in front forever, of people, but, but yeah, when totally. you start playing in front of people, yep. you have to learn. You it all learn. comes together. So I started the party <laughs> as part of Damn. our learning platform, you know, and, and brought God, in better DJs. And we would play the early set and our, you know, for us to grow in, in what we were doing and have a really solid party. So our, my, my deep sugar party is, works, you know, in partnership with when I first started playing, because that was really the ground that I, wow. that I learned how to play on with a really great support Ugh. system here locally of DJs that had been veteran DJs. I had grown, had grown up l listening to. Uh, how beautiful. Wow. What a remarkable story. Your your whole life is is you taking control and making it happen. And I am so inspired by you. Thank you so much for being a guest on Fem House Radio. We are honored to have you. You are truly a hero of mine and everybody else in the organization. So thank you Yay. for being for being representation for all of us, for for inspiring all of us, for for just owning your power. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you at Fem House. I'm bringing the beats. I'm always yes, bringing. I'm always wait. bringing the what we call in Baltimore the bang shang a lang. <laughs> yes, we cannot wait. Thank you. Free the people, free your soul.